Welcome to our latest episode of Minutes with Mates. Today we're taking the slow lane on some of New England's back roads visiting Tinga, Ben Lomond and the Langoflin Reserve. Tinga is on the Gyra to Inverell Road, closer to the Inverell end. The first European to travel through here was Alan Cunningham in 1827. He was here before squatters began to occupy large areas of land from 1835. Sydney Hudson's run was called Tienga, from the local Aboriginal word for flat or level. From the 1870s, tin was mined here and this became the main industry of Tinga, bringing in people from all over the world, including China. In this episode, we are travelling around to a number of different communities and today we've started off in Tinga. Um, We're going to go to the Wing Hong Long uh, Emporium or the museum, but uh, just be aware you need cash to get in there. It's $3 per person. So we've popped over to the Rose Cafe. I grabbed a meat pie. Heather got a chicken wrap. So we'll um, have that, got some cash, and then we'll pop over to the museum. Rosie's Cafe and Grocery Store offers a range of foods from pizzas, deep fried, hot food, burgers, pies and rolls, as well as basic supplies for locals and visitors. So I've got a chicken wrap, it's a nice soft uh, pita bread wrap sort of thing. Um, Beautiful chicken and salad, tomato, lettuce and mayo and I had it toasted so it's nice and warm for this cool spring day. Mmm, nice meat pie. So one thing I'm really enjoying about this chicken wrap is it reminds me of 30 years ago I lived in Narrabri and my friend and I used to go to a cafe called the White Rose Cafe that used to be there and we used to get this chicken pita bread wrap for lunch every Tuesday and this wrap tastes just like that. So Deb, if you're listening, I found one. The Wing Hing Long Museum is a step into Tinga's history. The store, which is now a museum and has no items for sale, gives you a glimpse into the rise and decline of a locality where ore deposits bring boom and bust to a local area. Wow. On display are goods that were left as they were in the store when trading ended in 1985, along with donations from people who gave back to the museum items they or their ancestors had bought in the store over the years. The last owner of the store was Mavis, the last descendant to keep the store open, employing Chinese immigrants and housing them on the property. She lived in the house at the back of the store. Kathy generously gave her time to tell us parts of the story of Mavis and her workers and of Tinga and the miners. Okay, so what's here was actually stocked when the shop closed down in 1998. As you can see, a lot of the boxes haven't been opened. Yeah. Back then they didn't have used by dates on the cans or bottles themselves. They did have them on the boxes. We know the peanut butter, the use by date was 1985. <laughs> so, 1985 and it's and now And she closed down in 98. Oh. So it was already out of, out the of date when it back was then. Closed yeah. Out. But it, when you look at the labels, the packaging, you know exactly. Yeah. Still today. Yep. Yeah. So mm. it's pretty interesting. I don't think I'd really want to be eating the steak and kidney pie or the oysters no. or even the sardines now, but... And they're the old metal tins. Yeah, the tin lids. Mm. Yeah. Sausages with baked beans. Mm, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> and steam engines. So there isn't a tree in Tinga over 100 years old. As you can see by the steam engines, they cut them all down and used them. And of course, they didn't have conservation back then. No. 
No, so they they just chopped them down, used them. Tin being the heavier metal stayed. Chinese had round mines, Europeans had square mines. Chinese are quite, still are quite a superstitious race. Mm -hmm. We can't have demons hiding above us while we're down underground. Oh. But mine grounds are actually safer anyhow. <laughs> hmm. But of course us Europeans would never admit to that. No. So you can imagine the water pressure. They have the the weighted rocks, which is up there. Oh, that's on, the rocks. Yeah, oh, so right. that there, helped that's it. hold it down. Yep. Yeah, because the muscles they had to have, the like amount of work. And then you've got the jackhammers being on the end of one of those for any length of time would have been quite uncomfortable, I would imagine. It was out of one of the five pubs, including original graffiti. Nobody will tell me who that JM was. <laughs> but yeah, so can you imagine lugging this up here? It's massive, it's heavy, but great recyclers. So that was a pool? That was a pool tape. There was five pubs in Tinga in its heyday. Wow. And that was out of one of them. Yeah. Gosh. Tinga had a population of around about 6,000 back in the heyday. 3,000 in the town, 3,000 on the outskirts, roughly. Wow. Five pubs, a crisp chip factory, soft drink factory, bakeries, car yards, everything was here. Wow. And if we'd have gotten the railway, we would have been the main centre, not in Varel. Right. Yeah. yeah. Nice as you can feel the weight in that. Oh. That's, this is found in the creeks and all of that. Again, feel the weight. There's 35% tin in that. Wow. Is it heavy? Yeah. It is very heavy. Mm. Okay. And I won't give you the big one. <laughs> I'll give you the small one. So that is what they call pure tin. That's after it's gone through the processes, the washing. Mm -hmm. So there's about 85% there and that's considered pure wow. in that okay. one. As you can see, the, it's shiny, it's really pretty. It is. It is shiny. See how it is. No. And it's heavy. And yeah. it is very heavy. Uh, that one is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and that's the finished product there after it's been smelted down. That urn. The Different colours, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the beautiful blue in there. Yeah. And the greens. Absolutely gorgeous. And they're just still. Yeah. You find them fossicking yeah. around. Okay, so we have fossicking. So because it's on a common, anywhere that's not fenced is common land, you can actually fossick on that for the crystals, the smokies, the jelly bean. Stanifer has jelly bean crystals. Mm -hmm. There's Green Valley Farm, of mm, course, which yeah. is a really great fun. And they've got a good museum as well. Yes. Yeah, it's just one of those little places that is really just great to visit so you could come and set your caravan up and hang out for a week and hang out yeah and have a great time and there's um the transport museum in Inverell yes there's Pioneer Village and then the wood turner out the road he's really great okay. and he's just amazing the work he does too fantastic yeah Mount Topper winery mm -hmm. but you have to make an appointment but the wine is really good, <laughs> <laughs> good. Yeah. yeah yeah so no there is really a fair bit to do in the area yeah, mm. yeah. thanks Kathy for such an interesting tour of the Emporium Museum We finished off signing the visitor's book with a fountain pen before making our way to Ben Lomond via the Moradon Road. This is a very scenic drive through rolling hills and grazing country, complete with old sheds and farmyards along the way.
So after Tinga, we made our way up to Ben Lomond, which is one of the highest points in the New England region. It is the highest railway station and it's at around 4,000, just over 4,000 feet. Ben Lomond was originally named by a pastoralist, a squatter, who named it after a mountain in Scotland, as a lot of people around this area named lots of things after Scotland. So the railway opened here in 1884, August 1884, and it operated until, well, what does it say? 1988, so there you go. So for railway enthusiasts, Pop up here and have a look at this Great Owl Railway Station. It's been kept intact. You can visit. You can't camp here on the railway grounds. There is camping down the road where you can put your caravan or your camping trailer, your RV. Go down the road to the recreation ground and you can spend some time here exploring this wonderful railway station and the history of this fantastic area. Ben Lomond is an area known for frequent winter snowfalls and magnificent scenery. Visitors can reach Ben Lomond via Morden Road, turning off the Gyra Road near Wandsworth, or along the Ben Lomond Inn Road, which is only 10 minutes off the New England Highway. We're at Little Langothlin Nature Reserve. So where is that? Well, if you drive a little bit north from Gyra on the New England Highway, you'll come across a small locality, a few houses and a servo called Langothlin. And then you drive a little bit further north and you'll take a turn and you'll find this back road that takes you out here to this nature reserve. It's a beautiful area of beautiful wetland. Scott's flying his drone down there. And there's no camping here and there's no fires and no dogs. They're the, they're the downsides, but you can picnic. It's a beautiful picnic area and you can um, go for a, a hike around the whole wetland. You can bird watch, you can do photography. There's a lot of things you can do here. So make sure if you're driving the Northern New England Highway, north or south, don't forget to find this little back road and check out this beautiful nature reserve. Thanks for joining us on this uh, episode around the back roads of New England. Uh, as Kathy mentioned, there are lots of other places around. Uh, there's the wood turners, there's the winery, and then we'll do a separate um, episode all together on Inverell. There's the Transport Museum, the Pioneer Village. There's lots to see and some fantastic scenery around on the back roads of New England. So we don't exactly know where we're going next, but we know we want to spend those minutes with mates.